Hello, my name is Michael Isakiris and I'm going to be talking about best practices of vertex painting in UDK. The main part of the video will be spent explaining what vertex painting is, how it's being used and the different methods used to blend between different types of surfaces. More specifically, I'll be talking about hard to soft surface transition, hard to liquid surface transition, hard to hard surface transition, animated vertices, and as a conclusion part, I will explain how parameters and material instances are used within the industry to speed up workflow and save memory. So basically what vertex painting is, is the transition between two or more different textures using the mesh's vertices as a canvas to paint upon. First I will show you an example of a static mesh and then I'll show you how to set up the material editor for a, for a basic representation of vertex painting. So what I have here is a polygon plane that was modeled in Maya and imported into UDK and in the Conant browser if I double click on it and open the static mesh editor uh, here and uh, if I open the wireframe mode you can see that it's made up of naive triangles and 60 vertices. Now the amount of vertices um, a static mesh has plays an important role on how the transition between the two different textures is going to be. The more vertices, the better the transition. However, more vertices means more polygons. And it's always best to have a medium size of vertices in uh, your meshes. Now, for this uh, static mesh here that's probably going to be used for a floor or a wall, the amount of vertices is probably too high. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to keep it as it is. Moving on to the most important part of vertex playing is the material editor. And my package here. I created a section called material and I created a material example. Double clicking and it shows a basic representation of vertex planning, which is this uh, linear interpolate node. Now, what a linear interpolate node does, it controls two different imp inputs based on a path expression. Now, in slot A, we have a texture sample of a, of a wall, which is going to be the base uh, texture and uh, in slot B we have a concrete wall which is going to be the overlapping one and as an alpha here in expression we got the red channel of the vertex color plugged in which is going to control the transition between these two uh, textures on our material. Now I've already applied this material on, on the um, static mesh, the plane that I showed earlier so just to maximize my view and uh, in order to paint now on, on the on vertices uh, I only have to select this mesh paint icon here, right here. By clicking on it, the mesh paint icon uh, window pops up, and if I hover my mouse on top of the static mesh, you can see the brush. Now I can adjust the brush radius, strength, and polyp by uh, adjusting these values over here. And what is interesting here, if I hover my mouse on top of uh, my static mesh, uh, you can see these red dots. Now what these red dots mean that mean that they have a value of 100% white painted on the, on the red channel. And that is why we got this concrete wall appearing. Now in order to get rid of this, uh, the only thing I have to do is select the red channel here. And by control shifting, with the control shift, I can erase that value of 100% white and stop plain painting 100% uh, black. So. Uh, right now we can see the transition happening. So if I hover my mouse on top of here you can see the red dots but if I hover it here we can see these black dots which mean that ha they have a value of zero. Now the transition between the two uh, materials te textures uh, is not ideal. Uh, there's this fall-off and ideally we want something more accurate which is can be done with uh, different alpha expression and I'm going to be talking about these in the next part of the video. Now in this part of the video I'll be talking about hard to soft surface transition. As a hard surface I've chosen a brick wall as a floor texture and uh, for my soft surface I've chosen a sand texture. What make this setup so unique is its alpha expression. If you follow my research document you can see how everything is connected in order to make this work. Now here if I choose to paint on with my red channel you can see the sand accumulating on the surface and I 
can use the green channel to adjust the fall off of that transition. I can also use the blue channel to intensify the normal maps. And I can use the alpha channel to offset the vertices on the uh, positive Y axis. Now you might want to be careful when offsetting vertices and not have extreme offsets because the collision of the static mesh is not updating. It's always good to keep the offset numbers to a minimum and to avoid tr problems when players walk into that area. In this part I'll show how hard surface to liquid surface transition is achieved. Again if you need to know all the technical details follow the step by step guide in my research document. I really wish I had more time to explain what's going on, but uh, because of time constraints, I'll just explain the very basics. So again, if I go into the mesh paint mode and select the red channel, I can control here by clicking on the surface, the liquid surface of the material. With my green channel, I can control the wetness that goes all around okay. the map. And by using the blue channel, I can offset the vertices but not in the negative y axis to have that illusion of depth. And by the alpha, I can paint in the like a, a fall off, so I have like a fall off of, of that wet wet map. And that's what hard surface to liquid surface is about. For this part of the video, I'm going to be talking about hard to hard surface transitions. Now, if I click on my wall here, I got two textures, a wall texture and a concrete texture. And if I choose to paint on top of them, utilizing only the red channel, you can see the transition here. And what's interesting about this technique is that it uses two different mix maps for the alpha expression which are combined together to get a more unique variation between the transitions. And <coughs> if I zoom in, you will notice that it has a procedural shadow generated uh, on the concrete layer, so the tra transition seems more natural. Oops. Yep. You can see the shadows right here. Here I will be talking about how vertex colors are used to animate vertices. If you take a closer look in the manipulator here, uh, you can see in which direction each, each uh, corresponding channel can animate the vertices. So for the blue channel, for the red channel, sorry, uh, you can man animate vertices on this axis. For the green channel, you can uh, move the vertices in the green axis. Uh, and the blue channel, you can vert you move the vertices up and down, which is the Z axis. Now, if I open my pe mesh paint mode and uh, start painting on the red channel, uh, you can see that effect taking place. So here I have sideways movement. Green is for depth, so it should be animate the vertices in that direction. And uh, the blue channel will manipulate vertices up and down. Now this effect could be used for water, fog transitions, um, or cloth simulations. I would like to emphasize this part of the video to explain what parameters and material instances are and how they are used in the industry to save time and memory space. Now material instances um, are used to change the appearance of a material without incurring an expensive recompilation of the material. 
general modification of the material cannot be supported without more compilation. So the instances are limited to changing the values of predefined material parameters. Parameters now are material expressions which their values can be modified in a material instance of the base uh, material containing the parameter. They are statically defined by the compiled material by a unique name, type, and default value. An instance of a material can dynamically provide new values for the parameters with very little expense. Now what I have here is the hard to liquid uh, surface transition and I've made a material instance constant out of it and if I minimize this window I've already opened both of them so here you can see the material editor of the master material of the hard surface to liquid transition and here you can see the uh, material instance of it. So what I want to demonstrate here is to show you that to create a parameter you just need to right click go to the parameters and choose whatever the parameter you want to use. So for this demonstration I've chosen the this parameter which controls the color of the liquid surface. Now if I move here you can see the parameter name which is unique and uh, it's called liquid map color and intensity. Now if I minimize this and I've already applied the ma material instance constant on the floor so the only thing I need to do is go to the vector parameter values and find that name. So you can see here uh, uh, the liquid map and color and intensity and the only thing uh, I have to do now to change its color is just to tick, check, check this box here and uh, go to uh, cl click here and just change the color to something like red or something and click uh, OK now you can see the floor the the, surf, the, the, the color of the water, the, lo the liquid has changed to something reddish so instead of creating this huge network uh, for every time you want to create a uh, liquid uh, material on top of your surface you can uh, keep the parameters and the fi functionality and um, create m multiple material instances depending on which what type of uh, liquid surface you want to have. As you can see here you have values that uh, control how the uh, color of the water is going to be, how the, the wet map is going to look like, um, the environment map, the textures and everything, uh, the scalar parameters, you can change the tiling and uh, pretty much everything. You have it, it is a very powerful tool and it's widely been used in the industry to um, speed up their workflow and um, and save on memory space. Now, vertex painting is a technique uh, which many ga game studios have used like Naughty Dog and in the Uncharted series in combination with tiling textures to break the repetitive patterns adding grime, dirt, snow, creating different variations thus creating a unique environment. Um, thank you for watching my video on best practices of vertex painting.